I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> This meeting is being live streamed by Chelmsford Telemedia and posted to the Chelmsford Public Schools website for interested community members to access and watch. In-person public participation will be taking place tonight in accordance with the Chelmsford School Committee public participation guidelines. Anyone speaking tonight during the public input portion of this meeting has notified the superintendent's office of their desire to speak and has been provided with these guidelines. Upon request, Written comments received no later than 12 p.m. on the day of this meeting will also be read and made a part of the record of the meeting during the second public comments session. Are there any members of the press tonight or anyone recording? Okay. Uh, welcome to the Chelmsford School Committee. Our first order of business is to approve the meeting, our minutes from our meeting on February 7th. Mm -hmm. I don't know where that went. Um, does anybody have any... Uh, Corrections or uh, comments? All right, then I'll take a motion. I move. I make a motion that the school committee approve the minutes of the regular scheduled school committee meeting of February seventh, twenty twenty-three. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Right. Five zero. Are we waiting for Sharon? Oh no, she's sick. Oh, um, she's going to watch the meeting remotely and take the notes. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, no problem. Um, next up, we have our chance for high school student representatives. This Thursday, March 2nd, is a half day for all students. And over February vacation, 22 students took advantage of experiencing the student exchange program. So 11 students went to La Rochelle, France, and 11 students went to Spain. This program is a once in a lifetime opportunity for students to explore, understand, and dive into another culture. We can't wait to hear about their experiences abroad. Hello, everyone. We are gearing up for the House Olympics, which start on March 13th till the 17th. The House Olympics is a competition to show which of the three houses, Hawthorne, Emerson, and Whittier, are the best. The winning house will be determined by participation in Spirit Days. In addition, there will be events such as the Student vs. Teachers Basketball, Hockey, and the highly popular Dodgeball Tournament. This Friday, the sophomore and freshman class are hosting the Shamrock Shakedown Dance from 6 to 9. And congratulations to sophomore Thomas Brown on winning the MIAA D1 State Wrestling Championship championship for the second time. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. All right. Does anybody have any good news that they would like to share? Our good news is here this evening. It's one of our agenda items. So um, share good news. We'll have other things I'd like to bring up. This weekend, uh, the high school is hosting the competitive plays. Uh -huh. oh, and um, our high school is doing Lost in Gip Town. I think they're going to be on stage around 2 o'clock. And everybody's welcome to come. All right. Anybody else? All right. All right. We're uh, now at our first public input session. Do we have any of you re registered to speak? We don't. All right. So <clears throat> moving on to new business. Great. We actually, as Linda mentioned, we have a couple of um, recognitions tonight uh, that are exciting. And we've got some friends here to, to talk to in a few minutes. Uh, but first, we're going to um, ask uh, our Chelmsford High School principal, Steve Murray, and one of our uh, biology teachers, Dr. Linda Tanini, to come on up. And Steve has a uh, presentation for her. So welcome aboard, guys. Thank you, Thank you for coming. Uh, hello, everyone. And, uh, Thank you for having us. I know that this is a busy time of year for school committee. A lot of things are going on, budget. So making time for us is, is wonderful. The reason why we're here is uh, to celebrate an amazing accomplishment. We have Dr. Linda Tanini here. She was a... Uh, she was given the uh, 2022 Massachusetts Outstanding Biology Teacher of the Year last year, and that was done by the National <coughs> Association of Biology Teachers. And it, it's, an, it's a, a true, a, a true a fitting accomplishment for her. She, she has great relationships with kids. She knows the curriculum. She's a leader in her field. And she was given this, this award by her peers in, in this industry and from uh, and our, our list of very highly qualified educators, and, and Dr. Sini rose to the top. And I know I'm thankful working with her, and I think our students benefit so, so much for that. So I wanted to present her publicly from the National Association of Biology Teachers, her plaque they gave to us for being an Outstanding Biology Teacher of the Year for Massachusetts. So congratulations. <laughs> No, she's real any, lucky to have her. She gets involved in so much, yeah. And she does so much for the school. She's also our co-chair for NEASC. She 
Too oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. It's sorry. Fun. That's the reward she got. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it was great people so. at that too. So no, but thank you very much. It's an honor to get this award. Um, I think my favorite memory is when I actually found out and I told my students and how excited they were. So I think they were more excited than I am. So that's great just being in such a wonderful uh, environment with such wonderful support from the school committee, from the teachers, from the administration, and even the kids too. So it's great. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Well, congratulations, uh, very Mr. Much. Murray. Um, and she's running away. Uh, uh, it is a busy time of year, but we will always make time uh, to recognize uh, teachers like uh, Dr. Tanini and the hard work um, that they uh, uh, do day in and day out with our kids. And I can't think of anything that's more important than recognizing the achievements of our staff. So thank you very much for being here thank tonight. God. I have a great staff. It's wonderful. So thank you all. Don't trip. I would. Thank you. Uh, second uh, recognition tonight, I'm actually going to turn it over to Dr. Hirsch to present. Um, th these are our UMass uh, team fellows. Yes, so very exciting. Um, I've been talking about this for a month. Our um, teaching excellent and achievement Fulbright scholars are here. These are the best and the brightest of their countries here to work side by side with our Merrimack Valley um, colleagues. We have two of them that are with us here at Chelmsford High School, and we also have all of the T fellows here with us that are across the Merrimack Valley at various um, school districts. So Matthew Bayronavon, Dr. Bayronavon, who's actually presenting tonight about mathematics, and myself have had the honor of being able to work with the T fellows and instruct them in some of our pedagogy, part of um, the leadership piece, and work closely with UMass Lowell. So we're so excited to have him here this evening. I'm gonna turn it over to Dr. B. Ronavon. He's gonna talk a little bit more about the program and the fellows, and then we're gonna let them share some of their experiences with us here at, during their visit. Thank you so much, Dr. Lang, Dr. Hirsch, for having us here this evening. Uh, it is quite an honor to be here with these T fellows who represent, as Dr. Hirsch said, the best and the brightest teachers around the world. They come to this country and to Lowell to learn about how we do education within our country. But it's really a win-win for us because we learn so much from them and their experience, their leadership, their style of teaching. It's a true partnership and it's something that Dr. Hirsch and I have truly enjoyed with this cohort and each of the cohorts for the last six years. And our relationship with UMass Lowell is something that is very dear to my heart, uh, having graduated from UMass Lowell and being, still being involved with both the mathematics department and the education department. So with us tonight, we have a total of 21 different educators who fall under this Fulbright scholarship selected to be here. And two in particular I have up here today, Hector um, and Somme, uh, who are here in particular because they have been paired up with Chelmsford teachers um, and have been working in the Chelmsford schools observing meeting, talking with kids, and they're here to share a little bit about who they are and then about their experience within the Chelmsford schools. So Hector, if you'd like to begin. Uh, yes, uh, thanks everyone for this honor, for this opportunity to be here. Uh, my name is Hector Madrid. I am from Honduras in Central America. I'm from a very small community, so being here has been a um, an amazing experience being able to share with uh, experts in their respective fields and my, my tea fellows also who uh, represent the best of the best in their countries. It's, um, it's been a, an amazing opportunity to grow professionally and also to create uh, bonds internationally, having hopes that uh, eventually in the future we, create, we can create many projects together. Uh, my experience at uh, Chelmsford High School has been so far amazing. Uh, the only thing I regret and I complain is that we haven't been able to go there as often as I would like. We just go there once a week. So 
the time uh, that we spend uh, at schools at observation and in the observational part is uh, really limited, uh, if I can say, if I'm allowed to say it. Uh, I've been paired with uh, Miss uh, Jess Ferronetti, and she's been an amazing teacher. She's uh, the Spanish teacher, and uh, I think that was a big plus for me because uh, my my main language is Spanish, so I can see how Spanish teachers here face the groups of students, and it's uh, it's really um, a warm experience for me to know that the same struggles that we have in our countries are the same struggles that you have here in, in, in the States. Uh, uh, when I came here, I was uh, scared, anxious. I felt like I was not up to the expectations as anyone who gets into a new environment. But eventually I saw a person standing in front of a group of kids who have the same fears that mine do. And that person also had the same anxiety that I do. How can I improve to, to reach my students better? And I think that's been the core of my experience, being able to connect with all of my partner teachers and the teachers at Chelmsworth High School that have been nothing but amazing to, to me. So, good. Thank you, Hector. And Somay? Yeah. Hello. Hello, everyone. My name is Somay Namuniao, and I come from Burkina Faso. I teach English as a foreign language in my country. My experience in Chemsor High School has been, uh, so far, very good. And I'm learning a lot from my colleagues in Chemsor, in Chemsor High School. And uh, we are learning how learning is taking place in terms of high school in a different way because we have been given the opportunity to attend different classes and to, to observe and co-teach classes in, with many teachers. And so we, had, we have had a lot of things that we're going to take back to our country, of course. We do not have the same realities, but it has given us the opportunity to think of how we can do the same way in a different manner in our country. And also, it is not just that we, uh, an experience, a classroom experience that we are acquiring in terms of high school, it is also uh, that we are learning how teachers move as they, uh, they help students also move. At the same time, learning is taking place Students are moving, progressing. Teachers are also working together in order to move with the student. And we have had the opportunity to attend a department meeting, which I've never seen in my country, a meeting where teachers of the same subject meet and discuss issues related to what they are teaching and made recommendations at the end so that they can improve it. And this is my first time to see it. And another thing also beyond that is that in terms of they are not uh, trying to make sure that learning is taking place or teachers are moving together, they are also working that all the schools move together as a community. And we also had this opportunity to attend a meeting where we have students representing somehow a different group of students that exist, that exists in Chelmsford, and where we have all the teachers, all the people in the administrations to talk about issues that cannot be dealt with in classroom, or when teachers meet to discuss about how they can work together, how they can uh, discuss issues related to uh, teaching. And this is also new to me. And so it has been so far a very good experience to me, and uh, I think I will go back well equipped and be helpful not only to myself, but my community, if not my whole country. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. And a couple other quick points. The first is uh, Somme's uh, teacher is Madame Gadbois, French teacher uh, within the high school. 
And the other thing is that all of the teachers in this cohort involved here from UMass Lowell are all English language teachers. In previous years, we had some STEM teachers involved, some other subject uh, teachers. The whole program has now been a little bit uh, consolidated, so all teachers who are language teachers have been coming primarily to our uh, area, UMass Lowell. All of the STEM teachers have been staying together, going to a different college um, and so forth. So all of the teachers here, both for Chelmsford and, and the surrounding districts involved, are all English language teachers. The, on, the only subject to teach, first. <laughs> Don't be carried away. I'd like to have that uh, struck from the record, please. <laughs> all right, thank you guys so much. Thank you. Yes. So we're thrilled that you're here. They're going to be staying with us until around 7 o'clock or so before they have to leave, and they're, they're going to have to endure Matthew's presentation, but they'll be okay from that. And um, we're just going to, they're just here to learn and observe. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask them. No, I do have a comment. Um, having had the opportunity to have some tea fellows in my own classroom, I think this is a mutually beneficial experience uh, because not only we, do we get a chance to show what it is that we do in our work with students, um, we get to learn a lot too and to see things from another perspective that we wouldn't ordinarily have. And that makes it a very special and enriching experience for all parties involved in this. Well, thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely, one hundred percent agree. The the relationship is very mutual, where we learn from them as much as they learn from us, mm -hmm. and uh, we take away quite a bit from it. Absolutely. So thank you for being here tonight, and thank you uh, for uh, welcome to our schools, and thank you for coming in and participating um, in this process. I was going to ask, what other schools are they? Are these other teachers at besides Chelmsford? Um, so we have Lowell, Andover. <clears throat> Parker, Westford, Parker Charter School, yep. Lemonster. 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 It's expanded over the years. It used to only be well, um, four or five school districts, but I believe that they've been expanding out to other school districts as well. All, all of the T fellows had requested Chelmsford, but we could yeah. only accommodate so many. So, right. The real question is, how many of them love the snow today? Oh. <laughs> no, yes, no. Yeah. Was nice. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's to get some downs. Obviously not shoveling. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is great. Welcome. Yeah, well, we thank you for being here. We're going to continue with our meeting, and you'll be here to observe. And when it is time for you to go, it's okay for you to, to step out. Yeah, thank you. All right, moving to... Um, the next item on our agenda is what we call a spotlight on one of our departments. So at each, we meet as a school committee um, twice a month. And the first meeting of the month, we typically ask one of our schools to come in and talk about some of the highlights of the work that they're doing. And then our second meeting, we ask one of our departments to come in and to talk about what they're doing in, um, in their individual departments. So um, Dr. Perenavant here tonight is going to talk about mathematics in the district and some of the work that's taking place with that. So we're happy to have you, uh, Matthew, and we'll turn it over to you. Thank you so much, Dr. Lang, um, for that introduction. So I have been coming here over the last, you know, five or six years since we've been doing this, kind of going through a very similar presentation about an overview of the department, some of the highlights. Um, but this year I have decided to change the approach of the presentation, mainly because there's something very exciting going on within the department, K through 12, and that is looking to do a full curriculum adoption. Within the school district, at all the different levels, we have been using the same mathematics curriculum for at least seven or eight years, and in some cases closer to nine or ten years. So we are definitely due for the process. But before we get into that, I feel like any good teacher should do, we should do a warm-up activity to get ourselves prepared for this. So with that, what I'm going to share with you is something that we often do in our elementary and our lower middle school classes as one of the warm-up activities, and that is what number doesn't belong in this particular case or which one doesn't belong. So what I would like to ask of the school committee members and maybe the students here as well to take 30 seconds and look at these four numbers and identify which number you believe doesn't belong with the rest and be able to support it with a reason.
Those of you watching at home, please feel free to tweet me your answer. <laughs> at Dr. Bayron Avant. So is there a volunteer who would like to share what they believe is the number that doesn't belong? With the reason, which is the most important part. Ah, our, our English language uh, school committee <laughs> member, Mr. Doherty. 43. 43. Now, why did you pick 43? Is that a prime number? Oh, I believe it is. And what are the other ones? Non-prime numbers. Non-prime <laughs> numbers or composite <laughs> numbers. Excellent. So he identified 43 as the number, and he gave a perfect reason using some appropriate mathematics vocabulary <laughs> to support it. Bravo. But as you probably can tell, 43 is not the only acceptable answer. Is there another volunteer who would like to share a possible answer? Yes, Mr. Moses. I actually picked the number nine because it's the only single digit number. Beautiful. Wow. The other ones are all two digit numbers. Nine is the only single digit. Excellent answer with great reasoning. Let's see if we can maybe get one more answer. Oh, uh, yes, Mr. 16. 16. Why 16? It's the only even number. Ah, yeah. the other three are odd, and you got a few yeses from the back that also <laughs> identified that. Bravo. So we have the only even number, 16. And one more, Ms. Newcomb? I said 43 as well. Why 43 for you? Because uh, 3 times 3 is 9, 4 times 4 is 16, and 5 times 5 is 25. Oh, excellent. So that's the only one that's not a perfect square? Exactly. Excellent. That's another great reason for it. One other thing which we didn't even get for 43 is the sum of the digits. Yes. 43, we added together, is 7. 25, 2 plus 5, 7. 1 plus 6, 7. And then we're left with 9. That could be one of the reasons for 9. So what's great about this question is there's no right or wrong answer. It's a low floor for entry, but yet a high ceiling of the types of things that we can do. And this is an example of the type of problem that we're trying to transition to, especially in our elementary and lower middle school level, so that we can get better participation, better understanding, and most importantly, being able to explain what we're doing and why we're doing it, which we just heard from our esteemed members of the school committee. So thank you for playing along with my warm-up activity. And now we'll move into the curriculum update. So the first looks at our K-5 to curriculum. Now, as everybody knows, within our school district, we have our elementary schools as K-4 to and our middle schools soon to be a 5, 6, and a 7, 8. Having said that, most, if not almost all, of the curriculum that we examined were set up as a K-5 to model. Uh, because some and many elementary schools go up to grade five. So we have been using math expressions. And what we have done is we have formed a committee of elementary teachers in addition to a principal, the elementary math coach, Anne Swisbin, as well as myself. And we have spent this year really trying to understand what are the different options, what are our needs and desires as a district, and we have narrowed it down to two different curriculum that we believe best fits what we need and want as a school district. And that is the Reveal program through McGraw-Hill and the Into Math program from Houghton Mifflin. And we have been going through and doing a pilot with each of those two programs beginning at the end of November that is going to be lasting through the end of March. So we are just about completing our process for doing that. In addition to visiting the classrooms and observing lessons, both by the math coach Ann and myself, we've also been surveying the teachers about their experience and meeting on a monthly basis with the elementary committee to be able to gather their feedback about the process. So for our timeline, we are really close to the completion. We will be meeting next Thursday to do a lesson comparison study before we make our final decision. And our lesson comparison study is really interesting where we're able to look at a lesson such as adding two-digit numbers and examining how each of the two programs does it and then comparing to see what are the strengths and weaknesses of each one. And one of the reasons for this is that many cases, whoever's piloting the new program, they love the new program. It's new and exciting. So we need to find a way to figure out of those two that we're piloting, which have been both pretty successful, which one's the best fit for us. So we're planning on having our decision made for our elementary adoption by the end of March. For our middle and our high school, 
We currently use the Big Ideas program. And we are in a little bit of a different situation where the feedback from both the teachers, the students, and me and the, our math coach, Donna Foley, has been very positive with the Big Ideas program. So we did a little bit of a different process in our curriculum adoption for our core curriculum for grade 6 through 8 Big Ideas and 9 through 11 Big Ideas. We examined different programs that were now new, out, and available by those same companies um, that, that I mentioned previously, as well as some other companies. And we examined to say, what do they offer now that our current program, Big Ideas, does not offer? After having a few presentations by some of the companies and looking at some of the sample materials, both the middle school and the high school decided that we are happy with the Big Ideas program and we're just going to move to the more modern version of the program, both with the textbook as well as the online components as well as the manipulatives. So the decision has been made to continue with the Big Ideas program, but seeing that our site license expired last year and they were nice enough to give us a one-year complimentary extension, it's now time to up our uh, program with the big ideas so we're looking to do the 2022 edition both uh, digitally as well as as our hardcover um, and then the other part of what we're trying to do for our curriculum adoption involves our statistics and our advanced placement AP statistics as you'll notice our calculus is not involved here we did a curriculum adoption separately for our AP calculus about four years ago and the reason for that was there was updated standards, so we basically had to do it. For our statistics, we've been using the same program, both AP and our just CP uh, statistics program, for about the last 10 years. And although there has not been any updated standards to the expectations, both our digital site license as well as the shape of the textbooks are due for an upgrade. So it seemed like an appropriate time that we would do that as, as well. And I've been working with our uh, statistics teachers, both the AP and the CP, to determine what the best curriculum will be. And although a decision has not been finalized as of yet, we're hoping it to have that same time frame end of March to make a decision for our statistics so that we can begin the implementation process by the end of March. And that process going forward is really going to be very focused on the professional development because any program, no matter how good it is, cannot and will not be successful if there are not proper supports in place to be able to help all stakeholders, teachers, students, and parents understand what makes up the new program. So we're hoping that by late spring we're going to be acquiring the new programs and hopefully getting an initial setup of our professional development for the teachers. We're hoping and planning on doing some curriculum writing for the program so that we get a sense of what our pacing would look like. And then we're going to be continuing throughout the 2023-2024 school year on that professional development, both with the program itself the online capabilities, and the philosophical approach, which I'm going to be leading with the teachers as well as the support staff and special ed staff about how it's best practice to be teaching math in 2023. So I feel very confident that the work that we have been doing in collaboration with the teachers as well as um, the other, you know, the other stakeholders has been a, a positive and good experience and I look forward to welcoming new programs for all levels uh, within the Chelmsford Public Schools beginning next year. And with that, I will have some time to answer any questions that you folks might have about the process or anything related to mathematics. Does anybody have any questions? Um, on the statistics that you're going to be upgrading, I guess, essentially, is what it is, what's the upgrade? What's the... What's the new approach? Or what's sure. Well, in regards to the statistics, our current textbook does not have any sort of online component or interactive practice for the students involving the statistics. Both of the two programs that we're examining have that supplemental piece. The program that we use now for statistics was created in 2010, really before the online component was available and accessible to students. So one of the big things that we're looking at is the supports for the teachers and the students 
for statistics. And then the second part of it is really making sure that the teaching strategies and approaches in the program are up to date with what we as a district believe philosophically math should be, which is focusing on conceptual understanding, solving problems multiple ways, representing the way we learn things multiple ways so that we can reach all learners. Mm -hmm. More and more, um, I, what I've been hearing is that in the statistics going forward after high school, uh, it becomes more and more part of the data type of uh, programs and course offerings in colleges and universities and so on. So is that also part of what we want to do? in terms of more programming in the statistics and so on? What well, I do agree with you that statistics is somewhat of an underrated uh, area within mathematics. It seems as though that the big thing, not necessarily in Chelmsford, but within our country, is the rise to get to calculus in high school. Mm -hmm. And um, not to get into the philosophical discussion, but I believe it's as important, possibly if not more important, to focus on the statistics. Mm -hmm. Because I believe that Algebra 1 should primarily be taught at the high school level, mm -hmm. and I believe primarily calculus should be taught at the college level, which there are some exceptions for those students who are strong in those areas. They do Algebra 1 in the 8th grade, just like we have our honors program here, and we offer both a college prep and a AP calculus program, both the AB and the BC, but I do agree with you that the idea of knowledge and application of statistics mm -hmm. is as important, possibly even more important, than what, what we do at the high school level for calculus. Yeah, so right now at the high school, what we're offering is CP at what level, and then AP statistics at what, I, I remember one of mine took it in sophomore year, but it was hard to get into. Yes, so, so we, we offer the AP statistics, which is, you know, there's one set, one area of that, unlike the calculus, which they break it into the AB and then the BC, the more advanced mm -hmm. calc two. Um, the statistics is at the college prep level, and mm -hmm. both are full year courses. Um, the college prep one is a general statistics course to get you to understand the data, the analysis, the way we look and interpret data. And then the AP statistics is obviously driven by uh, the expectations from College Board. Okay. Thank you. All right. Any other questions? Yeah. So are you looking to do a full adoption for the next school year, 23, 24? That is correct. At, at all levels? At all levels. Okay. Mm -hmm. Kind of. Moving into our next topic, then, is do we have money set aside in the budget for this type of <coughs> new adoption? I know when we did the English, it was a, a big chunk yeah. of change. It, it is going to be a big chunk of change, but we, similar to the way we rolled out the English adoption, um, that first time purchase of all the materials and manipulatives and textbooks and things like that would be a one time purchase. So we'd be um, looking to earmark some of our one time money for this uh, spring for that. And it's actually kind of timely because. A lot of districts that are doing these adoptions would typically use, say, their fiscal 24 money, but they have to wait until it's approved and actually allocated to purchase. If we use one-time money uh, this spring, and so like Joanne will be working on her projection, we'll be talking about that in March, early April, um, we'll be able to ma actually make that purchase now and hopefully get these materials in before the other districts. And that is the same uh, philosophy we used with the, uh, the literacy uh, program. When we purchased that, we did it as a one-time purchase. It comes up every, you know, eight to ten years um, in the cycle, um, so I think it's appropriate for a one-time purchase. It's not something you would put into your regular budget. We do have a math line in the budget that would pay for like a manipulatives that could use things along those lines, little replacements. But the big, you know, it's going to be a big number. The big number would come as a uh, one-time purchase. Okay, thank you. And if I could just follow up on that, really uh, a credit to Dr. Lang, and that is the <clears throat> desire, the planning to make that one-time purchase because we do have the option to do it in the fiscal budget year after year for the six years, but by doing it as a one-time <clears throat> purchase, we were able to receive a 40% discount on each of the programs. So by doing it in this manner, and Dr. Lang and, and you folks budgeting for it accordingly, it saved the district somewhere in the three hundred fifty to $375,000 range. So it really uh, is beneficial the way that it, it has been uh, prepared for. I just have uh, one uh, question, I guess. Um, I don't think I'm overstating it by saying that math remains, uh, for many parents, one of the most perplexing subjects um, to have to help their students with uh, when, you know, homework time comes <coughs> home. You know, gone are the days of counting bears and, and coins and multiplication flashcards. We teach it very differently now. Can you explain 
why that is. What is the purpose behind what we're doing now versus what we did many years ago, which was a much more maybe rote um, you know, focus, you know, learning your multiplication tables, and then you move on to the next thing? That is a great question, and I'm going to try to answer it in two minutes, although <laughs> I could spend the rest of this meeting doing that no, because uh, yeah. it's a great question. So at any point, just tap your head, and I'll know to stop. But you are correct that the way we learn math when we went to school is different. And the main difference is the fact that the focus is less on procedural fluency, procedural knowledge, the memorization, and more on that idea of conceptual understanding and the application for it. So when I went to school, I had to memorize negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared by those things we don't spend as much time on or prioritize because, you know, we have calculators and Google and things that can do it for us. I would rather have my student be able to look at a problem and correctly identify that they need to use the Pythagorean theorem and then say, well, I can't remember the actual formula, but I can do it, as opposed to someone saying, if you give me the formula and you tell me it's a Pythagorean theorem, I can plug in those numbers. So we're really trying to focus on what we've constantly referred to as those 21st century skills, mm -hmm. which is really about the decision making, the application, the understanding. So the, when we went to school for math, the focus was very different on the procedures and how you do it and the memorization. And over time, with the research has shown that that's not really setting students up for success not only throughout high school and college, but into their life because really they're never using it. So we want people to be thinkers, problem solvers, be able to communicate what they're able to do. Those are the important things. So for many times, it's not just here's the formula and solve it. Instead, it's set up in a way that we want you to understand it, which is why we don't immediately teach the way we do long division or the way we do formulas. Instead, we want them to build their understanding of it and then eventually go into whatever those equations are for it. So that shift is sometimes frustrating to parents because they're saying, why are you making this array, right? It's just eight times six, let's move on with our life. <laughs> and, and, and I can hear that frustration right. and, I, and I know that, yeah. but yeah. in that case, the students are saying, no, I can see that it's eight times six is really being, well, I can double six, and I know double six is 36, and there's two more. Well, that's 36, and double six is 12, so that's a 10 and a 2. So 36 plus 10 is 46, and then two more 48. Like, that thinking to me is the most important thing and why we teach math the way it is, as opposed to just memorizing, and then if I memorize it long term, I'm not going to recall it, and I can't apply it to anything because it has no context. So there's a lot more to it, but that would be the reason philosophically why and how we teach the math that we do today. Great, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Is that okay, Don? Yeah, no, I, I, I do appreciate you. you um, I maxed out probably, I think, about the third grade helping my kids, uh -huh. you know, with their math because, you know, it was very, very different. It's, you know, it's just very different. And so um, you're right. I think that, you know, you know my approach was... This time, this is this, and let's move on. So yep. I appreciate your explanation, and, and I hope that people listening tonight will also understand what it is that we're trying to accomplish. And just one final point on that. One of the things that we've looked at, we set up a rubric and criteria for what we're using to evaluate programs. And one of the things that we did is the family connections. Do they offer supports that we can share with parents on a either chapter by chapter, unit by unit basis, so they not only know what they're doing, but how they can support it, because that's something that we very much believe in, that parents are the third stakeholder. It's the teachers and the students, but using the parents not to be, oh, God, the parents are messing up the way we're teaching it. It's they want to be helpful, right? They want to be informed. They want to help their child the best that they can. So whatever supports we can give to them. And that is a big part of what we're using as our rubric for evaluating which program we're going to be using. Great, thank you. These new programs that are being piloted, how do they link up with iReady? And yes, so great question. One of the requirements that we had within our committee is that we would not even consider a program that, first of all, does not link with Clever. So we wanted to make sure everything can talk to each other from a technical standpoint. Okay. Then we said, okay, we want to make sure that it links philosophically with what we are doing with both our diagnostic 
and our support systems. So each of the programs that we're evaluating and using both the Big Ideas and the two at the elementary school have their own online component that's similar to iReady, but really falls short of the things that iReady can do with both the diagnostic as well as the automatic pathway for determining what students need. So in both of our pilots, we are not using that particular system that each of, the, each of those two curriculums use because we are very much devoted and in line with what iReady is doing for our district for both the mathematics and the literacy. And both programs said, fine, those are add-ons, bonus things. We understand why you would use iReady because they are the leader um, in the field. In the professional development component of this, given that the elementary level is going to have a totally new program here, and um, essentially they've just been through the new, you know, literacy uh, professional development. Here we go again, in other words. Um, I, I am sure you're planning and making certain that in the professional development component, the elementary school is going to be paid close attention to because it would seem to me it's totally new to them, but in your middle school level and your high school, you're just upgrading what you've got already. Yeah, so I would say first thing is that the, the love and respect for the elementary teachers, in my mind, is, is really at the top mm. because the fact of how many different subjects they have to teach, whereas, you know, the high school teachers work very hard and they're great, don't get me wrong, but they're teaching the same thing all day, you know, teaching algebra and then maybe a couple mm -hmm. geometries. The elementary teachers, extremely difficult. Mm -hmm. So to answer your question, one of the thoughts that we had when we were discussing was actually trying to implement a new program for this year, 22-23, but then we realize, hold on, let's make sure we're finished with all of the literacy professional development that's been happening, okay. because that started last year and is finishing up this mm -hmm. year so that we don't overlap, because it wouldn't be fair to anybody, especially the teachers, if we're saying we're still offering professional development in one program and at the same time starting another, which is why the long-term vision that we had was set up the new program for math, for 23, 24, and not any earlier. My understanding is the professional development for the whole literacy that's happening is going to be finishing at the end of this year, which then gives us the opportunity to focus our early <coughs> release professional development time on mathematics beginning next year. Having said that, it still will be difficult because the literacy program is still new to them and we're learning a new math program, but we were trying to be as respectful as we could of the fact that we didn't want to do anything at the same time. So at least we waited that extra year for that. Okay. But um, we do know it's a difficult job that they have. Absolutely. Yeah, we have a curriculum adoption cycle, so we know what's coming up and what's happening. Um, having taught elementary school before, and elementary teachers will tell you this is kind of how it works for them. They know that when one comes in, one goes out. So you try to rotate them through a six to ten year um, cycle. Typically, it goes 10 years. So we had, at one point, obviously, Matthew and I, when we started as coordinators, started off with the new ELA and math program. And then we had FOSS come in for the science. We brought in the social studies. Now this is the new cycle of ELA, math, science, if that would be the case. So we have a, a cycle of this. Let's hope for no pandemic. No, nope. well, actually, I'll be honest with you, the pandemic really helped us out with professional development. I, that's the one good thing I can take from it. We had more time with them. Thank you very much for coming thank in you. tonight. Yes, thank you folks so much. I appreciate your time. Thank you. And yeah, to that too, like we'll be talking about that uh, purchase wise yep. over the next month or so as well. So it's, it's timely that Matthew came in tonight to kind of give that overview. So we'll have that fresh in our minds when we're starting to evaluate budget and also you know, one-time uh, expenditures. Are they going to be staying with us? They can stay till yes. Uh, you're staying until 7 o'clock, or who is you going to let the bus driver know, or are you just going to step out? I think I'm staying in any case, but I don't know if we can stay. We're, we're planning on staying till 7. That's we're fine. We're going to depart at 7. Okay. <coughs> okay. Thank you. I just didn't know. Oh, interesting, you know. Sure. So, yes, it was we uh, We're interesting. Yeah. <laughs> I know I don't want to. Motions? <laughs> yeah. Can you just take a short break? So when they get up and go. I should yeah, have memorized good. all those timetables. <coughs> Six times eight right at the head of I memorized it. You had to memorize the timetables. I didn't know what you were talking about. <laughs> oh, I hated that.
<laughs> All right, so we're going to slide into our next item on the agenda, which I know everyone's very excited about mm -hmm. uh, tonight, is our fiscal 24 uh, budget. Five, Larry, so on this, at our last school committee meeting, um, which seems like a way ago because it was before the uh, before we had our February uh, break, we uh, did a budget overview, and I presented the uh, document to you. And again, for those watching at home, we followed a similar format uh, over the last number of years for continuity purposes, and it really works um, well with us. So I'm not going to do that budget overview again. But as you went through your document um, to prepare for tonight, I just want to draw your attention to a couple of items. On page uh, 10 of the budget book, that is the uh, what we call the summary level totals. So those are the individual uh, DESE function codes and all the different DESE line items that ultimately add up to the recommended budget for next year, which is $70,700,000. Um, so in the end of this, what we're going to do is actually start on page 11. We've done this historically. We'll go through the budget, ask any questions you like um, during the course of the budget. We've also, you know, instead of just kind of holding to the uh, public participation at the beginning, but not through the budget. If they were a member of the public that had a question about an individual line, we've kind of allowed them to come up with that page and ask. I'm comfortable with that. If you're comfortable with, yes. mm -hmm. with that flexibility for tonight, it's just a unique thing with the budget. And then at the um, at the very end, obviously, we'll vote the bottom line budget. It's that bottom line number, the 70700000 that ultimately is incorporated into the town manager's budget, but that's what goes forward to town meeting in April. So that's the number that we would be up, uh, discussing and, um, and justifying before uh, town meeting. But as we go through uh, tonight, and again, we'll start on page uh, 11, um, these all tie back to that main page. And so you were ultimately voting those line items on page 10. And when Joanna is entering the budget, and we're managing the budget, those are the numbers that we have to manage to. So that's why every once in a while you'll have a budget um, adjustment uh, come before you, um, a recommended budget transfer. It's because we need to go over the amount that you've approved. So those are the amounts that we have to stay within, just for the viewing audience so they know why we do this. Uh, but what I would recommend is actually just starting on page 11, um, just going through the budget and um, answering and asking questions you have. We'll um, vote on each individual bottom uh, line, and then at the very end, take a, uh, a summary vote. All right, looking at page 11, does anybody have any uh, questions? Uh, then I'll take a motion, Jeff. I make a motion to approve the bottom line budget figure on page 11, 1110 series school committee in the amount of $34,050. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Five-zero. Okay, page 12. Would you like to do this? Would you like me to do this? Oh, no, you do it. Okay, thank you. Does anybody have any um, questions, comments? If, if we could just get an idea of what's on the contract of services. Yeah, so contracted services, um, by and large, in this particular page, relates to the um, the website and the media uh, person. We had included, um, I want to say two years back, when we hired Chris O'Donnell to be our communications and media director, um, we had that uh, position, and then the funding for that position fall into the superintendent's office uh, because they were helping us district-wide with our social media and Facebook and whatnot. So it's really to support the contracts related to the communications. Okay. Like we have a company that does our website and things like that, so we would contract with them to do the work on the website and updates and things along those lines. But it's not the position. No, the position is listed up in the top. So, and the, okay, the, the I top see. box is all like the personnel, mm -hmm. it's all the people, and down below is all the non personnel. So the person is in the top box, but down below is the cost associated with it. Okay. Are there any other questions? I'll take a motion. I make a motion to approve the bottom line budget figure on page 12, 1210 series superintendent in the amount of $454,125. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Five zero. <laughs> page 13. We have um, one 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 two two zero assistant superintendents. Do I have any questions or concerns? All right, Jeff. I make a motion to approve the bottom line budget figure on page thirteen, 
1220 series assistant superintendent in the amount of $262,742. Second. I'm sorry. Thank you. I'm supposed to head you there. It's all right. All right. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Zero. Page 14, 1230, district wide. Does anybody have any questions? Just we, we had the increase in the copiers, um, you know, some of our existing copiers having to be replaced. What's the average lifespan on those? Anyways? I know we, we got some a while back. So. Yeah. <clears throat> Do you want to talk in general terms? Sure. I know COVID somehow affected it, too. Yeah. Okay. So you're right. We did purchase uh, 29 copiers or whatever, and um, three to five years um, is kind of the general number. Because of the pandemic, we kind of got a year of very, very low usage. So we'll get a, probably an extra year out of that. And then we do watch the usage on them. And um, if we see one, you know, not doing too well, we <coughs> kind of try to okay. take it out of, out of the fleet. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. All those in favor? Oh, I did not do that. <laughs> Sorry, Jeff. Right, that's okay. okay. I make a motion to approve the bottom line budget figure on page 14, 1230 series district wide in the amount of $530,700. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Five zero. All right, I realize I'm doing this a little bit not in the right order, so. Um, Bear with me while I kind of uh, find my uh, patter. <laughs> uh, one four one zero business and finance. Uh, Jeff, I'll take a motion. I make a motion to approve the bottom line budget figure on page fifteen. One four one zero series budget and finance in the amount of four hundred forty nine thousand six hundred fifty two dollars. Second. Right. Is there any discussion or questions? All set, Maria? Maria, you all set? No, I'm okay. Okay, okay all right. Okay. okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Five zero. Page <coughs> 16, 1420 Human Resources. Jeff? I make a motion to approve the budget line figure on page 16, 1420. <coughs> Series human resources in the amount of $362,969. Second. Any questions? Just on the substitute coordinator, we're going up by 0 0.3. Just that. Yeah, sure. On this one, and you'll see the um, at the very back of the budget under custodial services is the offset. This is a position that has been 0 0.6, and it was a 0 0.3 to support uh, the day to day substitute calls. And it was a point three to support Brian Curley in facilities, and Brian's located in my office. With just the amount of changeover in the HR office over the last year and a half or so, and now kind of coming back full time to needing subs and whatnot, we needed to reallocate uh, Bridget, who does a wonderful job, her service to really be full time dedicated to HR and managing uh, the day to day sub service. So um, Brian is utilizing uh, Robin, who's my admin assistant, for like secretarial day-to-day -day stuff. And uh, so Bridget, again, this was always a 0.6 position. It's just now fully allocated to HR. And when we get to custodial at the end of the budget, you'll see that it went from 0.3 to 0. Um, so it's, it's, it is a 0.6 position, but we're just allocating it properly to HR at this point. Okay. Any other questions <coughs> for the discussion? Right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Five zero. Page seventeen, one four three zero to one four three five legal services and settlements. Jeff? I make a motion to approve the bottom line budget figure on page seventeen, one four three zero through one four three five legal series legal services and settlements in the amount of one hundred and twenty eight thousand uh, dollars. second. Are there any questions or discussion? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Five zero. Page eighteen, one four five zero, district wide MIS. 
I make a motion to approve the bottom line budget figure on page 18, 1450 dis series district wide MS in the amount of $1,476,567. Second. Are there any questions or discussion? Just on the network office staff mm -hmm. explanation that, that number went up. Um, can you say again? The network office staff um, line went up from 145 to 159 for two people. Is that a, are those? New? Oh, it's it's new people. Okay. Um, so this is something that the um, school committee previously approved. It's two positions, but we reallocated funding within the department to support those two positions. So we had brought, um, when we had some retirements within the department, we brought some new job descriptions forward to you with revised um, salaries and things along those lines. Um, so it's still two FTEs, but the salaries were reapportioned <coughs> among the positions. Okay, so these are people we already have in place? In these well, they're in place now, but they're both new to their roles. They were in different roles previously. Okay. Hmm. On the contracted services, what is that? Contracted services would be, um, so this is like Bill's technology budget. Yes. Um, anytime he would need to use a vendor for something. So if it's like something that we don't do in district, or if he ever needs like a backup service for something, okay. um, he would utilize that, that line item for that. Okay. We had, just as an example, like we had a vendor that helped with the um, security cameras in the schools, so we would have to contract with them for their expertise in a particular area. It's more mm -hmm. cost effective in a lot of cases, too. To just yeah, we just wouldn't have the, the manpower or the, the ability to kind of justify a, a staff person dedicated to some of this stuff. Particular expertises. Yeah. Okay. Right, right. It's specialty stuff. Any other questions or further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Five zero. Page 19-2110, Curriculum Directors. I make a motion to approve the bottom line budget figure on page 19-2110, Series Curriculum Directors, in the amount of $1,400,891. Second. Sorry. Sure. Does anybody have any questions? Discussion? Just, you know, in the Secretary, and I know I've had the discussion with the Superintendent, the secretary for curriculum coordinators went up. Looks like a side. Well, can you just explain? Uh, we'll yeah. So this this happened quite a bit with the um, support staff contract, and, and I, we did talk about this previously. So when we approved last year's budget, we didn't have settled contracts with uh, support staff. So the budget that's re reflected for FY twenty three does not include the raise that the staff negotiated and received for the current year, nor does it um, include the increase for next year. So you're really seeing um, an unmodified FY23 budget and the reality of two years of the contract increase kicking in in FY24. We don't go back and amend the actual line items of the budgets. We uh, just carry them because we were carrying the amount of money that we settled the contracts with in the salary reserve for COLA change. Um, line on a different page of the budget. So you're really kind of seeing the catch-up effect of the contract settlement. Yep. On the professional <coughs> development, this is simply for coordinators. Uh, that's correct. Okay. And the translation services, mm -hmm. is that the EL translation? It falls under coordinators? Um, yes, Joanna, can you jump in on that one? Right. Uh, like if we had to um, have interpretations either in writing or when we use the like the phone service mm -hmm. that's here and then also if we had to do a rewrite of the handbooks that's um, all budgeted on this line okay so it's not the translation services <clears throat> that is used with students and families and so on in EO yes well it is they, yeah. they could use it yeah okay I, I guess it's just not restricted to the L it would be any circumstance in the district where we need to translate something. Okay, but it includes that. It would include that. Yeah. All right. Any other questions or further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Five zero. Page twenty. Two one one zero. Curriculum director, special education. I make a motion to approve the bottom line budget figure on page twenty. 2110 Curriculum Director Special Education 
in the amount of $982,289. Second. Just hold for one second. Something I said? <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming. Enjoy the rest of your time. Yes. Yes, bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. I think you offended them, Jeff. Uh, I did not. <laughs> it happens to everybody's the first time with the budget. Yeah, it's a little bit more vibrant here. Uh, I'm yeah. trying to, but I just don't want to get the numbers wrong as an English person. It'll like, yeah, get some volume in there. <laughs> no, it's okay. I second. I had second is where we left. Thank you, yes. Yep. Okay, so uh, John has seconded uh, the motion. Um, is there any questions or discussion? On this special education administrative chairperson, that is actually more than one position. Hmm. Correct? Well, I'm sorry, where are you, Maria? Four. Four. Special education administrative chairperson. Yeah. It, it's four positions. Right. right. Okay. It says, see it right there? Yeah, the, 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 yes. the full position yeah. equivalent is, it, is four. If you look at this, it looks like it's the highest paid <laughs> individual in the entire, right? But it's not. It's four positions. No, it's, it's, right. it's four combined. Right. Any other questions? Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Five zero. H21, 2210, school leadership. Right, I'm going to try dramatically so I don't drive anyone else out. <laughs> Only two people left, Jeff. Yeah, I know. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> There's no such thing as a small audience, John. I make a motion to approve the bottom line budget figure on page 21. <coughs> 2210 series school leadership in the amount of $3,088,474. Second. <laughs> Are there any questions or yeah. discussion? Can you just explain the, the kind of the, the flip flop with the secretaries and clerk positions there? Sure. <clears throat> it's the same number of people. Right. Um, it's just the titles had changed uh, during our negotiations with uh, support staff. So we had one position at CHIPS, um, which ended up m moving from a clerk to a secretary title. Um, again, same body. It just moved into a different title. We um, had the, um, the vestibule uh, secretary at the high school who was a secretary and not a clerk. It was miscoded in last year's budget. Again, it was just a, a naming thing. And the third one was, um, oh, it was, um, there's a position at the high school also in the main office that deals with uh, data. And the person brought it to my attention that technically they were a secretary, they were in the secretary grid, but um, I had had them listed as a clerk. So we just changed up the title. So it's, it's um, still 24 people. Yeah. Um, it, this just corrects for the titles. And this reflects the, um, the negotiated contract increases as well. <coughs> Is there any other questions? Further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Five zero. <clears throat> Page 22, 2300 to 2305, classroom teachers, regular education. I make a motion to approve the bottom line budget figure on page 22, 2300, 2305 series, classroom teachers, regular education. In the amount of twenty-five million two hundred twenty-four thousand nine hundred sixty-seven dollars. Second. Are there any questions? Yeah. Is there any discussion? Yeah, just in, in past budgets, we've always had a little flexibility in case, like an extra K section popped. Do we still have that flexibility in here, or? Yeah. So what we have for this year's budget, we will. We'll take a look at the um, staffing in the springtime when it comes to. Uh, I'm sorry, not the staffing, the enrollment in the springtime. So we did the K enrollment already in the winter. We'll do it again in the springtime, and we always budget for four kindergarten classes at each building. But the last couple of years, we've had to add a fifth. This year, we only have one fifth at Byam, but the two years prior, we had one fifth at Harrington and a fifth at Byam. So right now, we're carrying an extra FT. Um, FP, TE, basically an extra position, because we have a fourth grade classroom that's bubbling out of um, center school. So I have like an extra teacher uh, in here to be placed somewhere. I'm having a feeling it might be back to buy him again, but we just won't know for sure. And then if we ever ended up needing um, two, let's say, so I've got one floating position right now. If we ever needed two, I would just have to um, allocate them, and we have done that, and then I would need to find the money in the budget for that. 
How are the K numbers looking there? We, just look we had a pretty robust yeah. Um, yeah, registration period in January. You just never know if more people came out in January unless they're going to come out in the springtime. We really have to wait until April. Yeah. But um, we had a very good showing. Right. Was K down this year? Or was it up? No, it was, okay. no, we had a good year. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, two years ago we had an incredible year where we had to add the second classroom. Yeah. But um, no, we had a very good year this year. Yeah. Okay. Um, in this leadership and in anything in the teachers anything going forward this whole middle school um revamping um what are we calling it realignment thank you realignment no revamping sorry right that's okay for the realignment everything is included all the positions that you need and that you see are needed have been included in this budget yes yeah, so for the time being all of the positions that are currently at um, Parker and McCarthy mm -hmm. are included here in this budget. They're obviously going to have to shift schools. So we'll have like some people um, mm -hmm. moving around. That will have to take place. Beyond that, um, I think we mentioned at the last meeting as well, um, we're still working with um, DM Group on the Special Ed Opportunities Review and kind of some of the strategic planning priority mm -hmm. areas. What I intend to do is utilize any of the um, extra ESSER money that we have for 24 and 25 to seed any of those programs that may come up as a result of those reviews that are taking place. Um, so I'm feeling confident that this budget here accounts for everyone we currently have and where we need them to move for next year. But if something comes up out of the review where they say, you know what, you really need to add this particular staff member or whatnot, we have that extra money to allocate to that to get mm -hmm. us into 24 and 25 and eventually work into the regular budget. Okay. So I'm confident. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? <coughs> All those in favor? Aye. 5-0. Page 23, 2-3-1-0, Teacher Specialist, Regular Education. I make a motion to approve the bottom line budget figure on page 23, 2-3-1-0 series, Teacher Specialist, Regular Education, in the amount of $2,227,404. Second. Are there any questions? Is there any discussion? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's okay. I know that this this includes that additional position uh, going yeah, for the the group that's moving up for the different literacy program we now have in the middle school. The group that has about nine students, ten students moving from fifth to sixth grade. Right? No, 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 no that's not. Not, that's we haven't gotten there yet. That's yeah. on the special ed page. Yeah. This is totally different. This is totally okay, different. great. Thank you. I'll bring it up there then. <laughs> okay. Any other questions? Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Five zero. This Eight. is your page, Maria. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> page 24, teacher specialist, special education. Oh, so here I come. Wait, hang on. I'm sorry. You messed me up there. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. Page 24, <clears throat> 2310, teacher specialist, special education. I make a motion to approve the bottom line budget figure on page 24. 2310 series okay. teacher specialist special education in the amount of seven million four hundred thirty thousand one hundred and eighty five dollars and I second mm -hmm. Are there any questions Maria? Well, I fully agree with this and I, of course that I, I would like to see this uh, You know position in the new middle school language based program um, My question is and this is for the future mm -hmm. if we could have some discussion and put it on the agenda to discuss whether we can move this to an earlier time as well in the in the whole process. I am not aware, and I don't know how it works um, in terms of maybe it's better third, fourth grade, whatever, so that we don't get it to the middle school level, so that the students don't need the help at this point. But just to see how that could possibly be worked, so that because what we're doing is every year we seem to we're going to need a new position you know, an additional position. And maybe if we can stop this earlier, we don't need to continue growing this in the middle school and we can stop it off earlier for the student and it's better for the student possibly. I don't know enough about it to say that that's so and wondered if maybe we could have a discussion in the future about it. Sure, absolutely. Thank you. So could we just make a note that uh, as yeah. we're looking at these positions, go ahead, did you, is there something you want to add? No, I was just going to say, I mean, to that, like, um, we had to do the reschedule of special mm -hmm. education coming in. So when we do that, I can definitely have Amy touch on that <coughs> because, um, and we, to your, you're correct, Maria, um, what we're trying to build is a whole middle school 
continuum yeah. of the language-based program. And it is ultimately going to be four teachers um, over the course of the four years. It's just that we've implemented in one year and we're rolling it out because we identified a group of students who will benefit from this in fourth grade, but they're obviously going to keep progressing when we have another group potentially coming in behind them. Um, I certainly will ask Amy and even the, um, the admin chair that does the specialized programs to yeah. talk about this and to talk about, you know, at the elementary level why it's different or, you know, would something like this ever be beneficial to that? I can make sure that that gets included in the presentation. That would be great. Um, but for the time being now, I don't want really to be surprised. Like next year we will have another position for seventh and then the year after there will be another one for eighth mm. because we are building out that full program. <clears throat> but I'll, I'll ask her to include that. Is that, right? that would be true for account. All right. Is there any other questions? Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Page 25, 2320, Medical Therapeutic Services. I make a motion to approve the bottom line budget figure on page 25, 2320, Series Medical Therapeutic Services in the amount of $447,729. Second. Are there any questions? <clears throat> any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Five zero. <clears throat> Page 26. 2325 substitutes. I make a motion to approve the bottom line budget figure on page 26. 2325 series substitutes. <clears throat> in the amount of $811,000. Second. Any questions? Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Five zero. Page 27. 2330 paraprofessionals. I make a motion to approve the bottom line budget figure on page 27, 2330 series paraprofessionals in the amount of $4,696,835. Second. Are there any questions? Just on the lunchroom, Marisa says where we needed two more. Where, where do we need the two more positions? We had added two more at the high school um, during COVID and coming out of COVID because the whole lunch schedule had to be adjusted, and they ended up um, <coughs> utilizing the cafeterias and the learning commons for lunches, so we just needed some extra coverage. Um, and it was warranted and, and well received um, and when we put it in it's kind of hard to pull out at this point um, they're using it as part of the staffing so when I talked to Steve it's not a significant cost for the lunch and recess aids um, so we ended up adding two so we have lunch aids at the high school as well oh we always had two okay yeah, but now we're going from two to four Must be nice. right. Yeah. right well we have the two cafeterias operating yeah, yeah, at the same yeah. time and we do still have some kids going to different areas of the building to eat lunch um, so it's, it's been helpful. Okay. Are there any other questions? Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Five zero. Page 28, 2340, Library Media Center. I make a motion to approve the bottom line budget figure on page 28, 2340 series Library Media Center in the amount of $829,070. Second. Are there any questions? Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Five zero. Page 29, 2357, Professional Development. I make a motion to approve the bottom line budget figure on page 29, 2357 series Professional Development in the amount of $218,275. Second. Are there any questions? This anticipates any professional development for the new math curriculum and all this, right? That, yeah, that would be part of, uh, part of the adoption. Yeah. All right. Any other questions? Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 5-0. Page 30, 2410 to 2415, textbooks and instructional materials. I make a motion to approve the bottom line budget figure on page 30, 2410, 2415 series, textbooks and instructional materials in the amount of 
$547,405. Second. Are there any questions? So this 106252 for the mathematics books is in addition to whatever the new ones are that are coming? Yeah, that's a holding place for right now because we have math materials that we have to replenish every year. Okay. We have different manipulatives. Um, and until we're finally done with the um, the adoption, we wanted to leave it in there. We didn't want to have a kind of a cliff and have nothing and then have to come back up to it, say, a year from now. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll take that into consideration when we're doing the, um, the buy. Okay. Are there any other questions? Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Five zero. Page 31, 2420, instructional equipment. I make a motion to approve the bottom line budget figure on page 31, 2420 series instructional equipment in the amount of $173,300. Second, you need a moment? You need more no, water? I'm just going to get the guy out there yeah, with just, cuts. No, I have water. I'm We're seconded. Right. We're good. Hey, are there any questions, Dennis? Just on the science. Um, this is long. Went up by. Yep, I have that for you. Okay. Um, so the the two main components are he is going to purchase additional probes and hardware for grade seven and eight curriculum, and grade seven microscopes, and then something new is uh, we in the school department now are paying for the um, disposal of the lab waste. Okay. Um, in that the town used to pick that up. Um, and that is five thousand. Okay. So the town DPW would do the disposals in it. Uh, we'd contract a vendor okay. to do it, and they would pay for it. Okay. It would just wasn't working as smoothly as we. Uh, you know, we wanted it to. Even even when you do it itself, it's, it'll be a pain. But yeah. Yeah. Uh, this will just streamline it a little bit more, and it wasn't significant money. Okay. Are there any other questions? Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Five zero. Page 32, 2430, General Supplies. I make a motion to approve the bottom line budget figure on page 32, 2430, Series General Supplies, in the amount of $597,008. Second. Are there any questions? Is there any discussion? Does this include the supplies for the students? Is no, this we use one-time money for that. So we've historically, like the last, I think at least three years, um, when we uh, put together what the recommendation is for the one-time mm. funding, that's where that's come from. Okay. We haven't actually had it as a line item in the budget um, to this point. We've just used one-time funding for it. It's the a other, very good thing. It is. No, we've definitely heard good things about it, and I'd like to continue it. The other nice thing about using the one-time funding is it's available to us now in the springtime so that we can actually make the purchase before we get to the summer. Because yep. if we use 24 money, we really have to almost wait until like that third week in July to have access to the new accounting system and issue purchase orders, mm -hmm. and then we're behind the, the eight ball. So if we can use one-time money to make the purchase in, you know, May, uh, early June, it just sets us up that much better up, up, uh, ahead of other school systems. Makes sense. I have heard good things about it, too, though. I mean, oh, yes. I intend to keep that going. Is there any other questions? Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Five zero. Page 33, 2440, Other Instructional Services, Special Education. I make a motion to approve the bottom line budget figure on <coughs> page 33, 2440. Zero series other instructional services special education in the amount of hundred ninety thousand dollars. Second. Are there any questions? Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Five zero. Page thirty four two four five one to two four five five. Classroom instructional technology and software. I make a motion to approve the bottom line budget figure on page 34, 2451 to 2455 series, classroom, instructional technology, and software in the amount of $735,000. Second. Are there any questions? 
Is there any discussion? Maria, you all set? No, I'm good. Okay. But, all right. um, this instructional software would be for everything? Like everything district wide that like we have usually district wide licensing uh, mm -hmm. for all of our products and bill and technology would kind of control all the licensing. So we issue like the purchase orders directly from his department for all of the software. So if there's a book and it has a piece of software linked up to it, it's part of this budget item. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions for the discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Five zero. Page thirty five. Two seven one zero to two eight zero zero. Guidance and psychological services. I make a motion to approve the bottom line budget figure on page thirty five. 2710 to 2800 series guidance and psychological services in the amount of $2,874,759. Second. And are there any questions? Is there any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Five zero. Page 36. 3200 medical and health services. I make a motion to approve the bottom line budget figure on page 36, 3200 series medical and health services in the amount of $995,976. Second. Are there any questions? Yeah, just on the care souls and AED support, have we been covering those with grant funding in Previous budgets or uh, no? The the big uh, jump up here is Care Solace. Okay. We've been covering the AEDs in this line item, but we used to have um, William James. Uh, what was the name of it? Yeah. William James. Oh, was it called William James? Yes, yep. Didn't it have another name. No, oh. we used to have <laughs> William James, <laughs> and uh, we switched over to Care Solace. It, it is a more comprehensive service. It just costs much more than uh, than William James did. So that's why that uh, number is going up so much in the uh, budget. I have a question on uh, Care Solace. Hmm. Is this what the town, the municipal side, is using as well? Yeah, we're both using the same provider. It, the bill is apportioned so that the uh, member of uh, students in the district kind of get charged to us, and the town is, is paying for, like, a resident cost. I don't know exactly how that works, but they're paying for the cost for the uh, the residents. Okay, so it's kind of sharing that cost based on... It's a, it, yeah, it's based on... Head, I think it's based on, like, headcount. Well, okay. it's certainly based on students for us, but I think it's based on, like, residents for the town side. Right. Great. But they're using the same service, so there is um, coordination on that part, which is great. Mm. We're very happy with the service. It's just more costly. I think we were getting some reports on a regular basis on what happened with the William... William mm -hmm. James, yes. And maybe... This could be something that we get once in a while and see how it's being used. Yeah, it's um, going to come up again, I'm sure. I think what both William Jins didn't they actually suspend um, like what they were doing for um, a, a period of time because yeah. they were so overwhelmed. Yes, yeah. um, and so that kind of forced us to look right. To, uh, we had to add care service. service, I think, at that point. Right. Yeah. But we used to get a. Um, I I almost want to say it was like every six months or eight months we'd get a report from William James. When Shannon Bischoff was here to do her review, yeah. she pulled it up on the screen for you. Yes. So she does get regular reporting and updates from the system. Let me find out if there's some kind of a canned report that they do, just periodically, that I can throw on the agenda for you. That's great. Okay. Are there any other questions? Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Five zero. <coughs> Page 37. 3300 transportation. I make a motion to approve the bottom line budget figure on page 37, 3300 series transportation in the amount of $4,467,560. Second. Are there any questions? No. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Five zero. Page 38, 3400, zero, zero, food services. I make a motion to approve the bottom line budget figure on page 38, 3400, zero, zero, series food services in the amount of $125,628. Second. Are there any questions? Just on the support staff line, um, we were funding it for two years and then it kind of gone away. 
I wait less. We weren't really finding it. Um, this is one of those items that was um, a way for us to almost allocate some more money towards one-time um, <laughs> spending. So this was basically um, an expense transfer to move money from the charges that hit the food service revolving fund to the local uh, budget as a way of reducing the local budget, freeing up a little bit of money in the reserve fund because we're going to try to fund some of the capital projects that were going to be multiple year out of the revolving fund. We can do that with the revolving fund. We can't do it with the local budget. Um, so we never really budgeted for those salaries, but and that's why the numbers are odd. It was almost like numbers we backed into, yeah. but we basically moved um, charges from the revolving fund to the local budget, which again freed up funding in the revolving fund. So they get paid through the revolving fund? Oh, all the food service staff gets paid through the revolving fund. Um, that was just our way of accounting for that. Okay. Was that a good explanation, Joanna? <laughs> yeah. and, and you saw, you, we bring this forward to like in the June time frame each year if we're still favorable in the local budget. Okay. Are there any other questions? <clears throat> any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Five zero. Page thirty nine, three five one zero, athletic department. Make a motion to approve the bottom line budget figure on page thirty nine, three five one zero, series athletic department in the amount of nine hundred fifty thousand six hundred ninety six dollars. Second. Are there any questions? Hey, you never see it, but the line item for pool and ice rental went down. Is that any, any particular reason we uh, I, over budget before? We, I mean, I think you know Dan is conservative, you know, but he's you know methodical on what he okay. you know calculates for, and that was his. Um, I mean, it's nice to see that you know, something went down in the budget, so, yeah. but I, I was surprised. Yeah, a lot of these numbers do come directly from like the department heads, so they'll recommend what they think they need uh, for the year. I do know that, like, when it comes to obviously pools are expensive and, and yeah. ice time is expensive too. Uh, I can't fully explain it to you, but they do something also with like the ice practices where um, I want to say, like, let's say it starts at three o'clock in the afternoon is like the ice time they rent because no one can come in prior to that because um, we're kind of locked on time. I think they actually get the ice time as of like 2.30. So there's like an extra half an hour now I don't think they're paying for. that, um, And that's all kind of dictated through that contract the town has with the management company on the ice. But somehow they've been able to find little ways to kind of be economical with it and still get the ice time that they need. Right. Are there any other questions? Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Five zero. Page 40. 3520 other student activities. I make a motion to approve the bottom line budget figure on page 40, 3520 series other students' activities in the amount of $204,240. Second. Are there any questions? Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Five zero. Page 41, 3600 school security. I make a motion to approve the bottom line budget figure on page 41, 30, excuse me, 3600 series school security in the amount of $204,004. Second. Are there any questions? Yeah, can you just explain what the CPS court liaison does and how come the jump? Yes, so this used to be a stipend that was tied to um, one of our former supervisors of students at the uh, middle school. And the person would basically be like the district's liaison to the, the court. So if we had to file like a, um, a chance, like a child need of services or any kind of like a CRA. attendant. What? CRA. Yes, oh, the CRA now? Okay. They call it a CRA now. <laughs> I'm a little old school, I guess. So if they had to uh, file that, um, this person would be the liaison to go to the court and actually represent the district at the hearing. Um, it just w So it's actually vacant right now. It's not the person retired. It's not fitting in perfectly with any of the current people we have's positions. Um, so I increased it slightly for next year, thinking we may need to actually just kind of like contract for that services 
It's not that we can free up a district staff member to go be in court all day for some of these hearings. So we may have to look for like an outside person or someone to actually do that. And I just figured if we had a little bit more flexibility in the dollar amount, it could be more attractive. So who was doing it this year? Just uh, no, it's kind of piecemeal right now. All right. Um, we it used to be Brian Sorgan at the McCarthy. He held the title and he retired last year as the um, supervisor of students at McCarthy. Yeah. And again, it's just not fitting perfectly with any of the uh, people we have now. Um, they're kind of new to their roles, and it's a whole undertaking to kind of get up to speed on. And it's just difficult to, to um, release people from the high school. We have two at the high school, but to have them also be pulled away for periods of time is, um, is tough. So we, we have to look at how we're going to revamp that. Um, but I, again, I just thought putting a little bit of extra money there could potentially help. Are there any other questions? Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 5-0. Page 42, 4110 4210, oh, excuse me. Excuse me. 4110, 4210, and 4230, custodial services. I make a motion to approve the bottom line budget figure on page 42. 4110, 4210, 4230, series custodial services in the amount of $1,943,177. Mm -hmm. Second. Are there any questions? So this is the contract that we haven't finalized yet that we're going to be negotiating, right? Um, no. So two, no. Th two things to point out on this particular page. This is where you're going to see that offset of the 0 0.3, the secretary position. Remember, we talked about that earlier. So this um, 0.3 actually goes down. That other 0 0.3 was allocated earlier in the budget. I just want to point that out to you. But this is the uh, contract of cleaning services we have now. We went out to bid last year. We originally awarded okay. two contracts for, we used to have three companies. We went down to two. Um, so we have a contract prepared for the one company that was doing, uh, oh, actually, we had contracts prepared for both companies. One company uh, earlier this fall was really just underperforming, uh, and we agreed with that company to sever ties. So mm -hmm. the first company actually picked up the work because they had bid that work as well, um, and it actually is coming in as a little bit of a reduction to us. Mm -hmm. um, we were paying a little bit of a premium to have two different companies because in the event that a company have a default that it really wasn't doing their job, you could have another company in district to be able to pay and pick up the slack. Um, so what we need to do now is kind of an amendment, at least for the year, and have a discussion about what to do longer term about having that first company uh, pick up that work. Um, so that's all in the works right now. But this was previously bid um, last spring. Okay. Are there any other questions? I think she was just reminding us that the custodial contract for the employees. Oh, I, I'm sorry. I thought you were talking about the vendor. Am I incorrect? Isn't you, this, this? Yes. Okay. You are correct. But I okay. thought you were talking about something different. So on this particular page of the budget, we have two things going on. What I spoke to was the companies that we contract with to come in at night and actually perform the cleaning service. Yes. Aside from that, I think is what you were talking about, which right. is the custodians the themselves. Sales, yeah. And yes, so we so this includes their current salaries. Earlier in the budget, there was a page where we had a line item for salary reserve for negotiations. Yes. So that's where the funding for uh, okay. the raise would be. But we do need to. It's the end of March. We're going to be convening with this group yes. to have the bargaining session. Correct. Yes. I'm sorry. So that that the people piece is going to be taken care of, and I had addressed the the vendor piece. Thank you, Joanna. I feel better now. <laughs> Are there any other questions? Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Five zero. Page forty-three. Oh. Four one two zero. Four one three zero. Heating of buildings and utility services. I make a motion to approve the bottom line budget figure on page forty-three. Four one two zero. 4130 series heating of buildings and utility services in the amount of one million three hundred eleven thousand one hundred and forty five dollars second are there any questions any further discussion all those in favor aye, aye. aye. five zero page 44 five one five zero employee separation costs I make a motion to approve the bottom line budget figure on page 44, 5150 series employee 
separation costs in the amount of $144,593. Second. Are there any questions? Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Five zero. Page 45. 6200 to 7200 Civic Activities and Capital Land and Buildings. I make a motion to approve the bottom line budget figure on page 45. 6200-7200 Series Civics, Activities, and Capital Land and Buildings in the amount of so. zero. <laughs> Second. You, you were so just to throw me off. <laughs> You've all been waiting just for no, page was, 45 to come, just to throw me off. You, you were so excited about reading that, I didn't want to interject. Um, well, this You don't actually have to vote on this page. So what this page does is, for the last couple of years, we've also used some of the one-time um, spending money to pay down the debt, the, the principal and interest payment on the chur fields. It started during COVID because we really weren't generating the rentals to be able to pay for them. Um, so this is what you're actually seeing. It was similar to one of the other pages on the, the food service folks. Right. Um, so we're basically just um, taking payments that would have hit the revolving fund for the chur fields and just showing the actual charges hitting our local budget. So it was a way to basically preserve the revol uh, revolving fund for the chur fields. And we had funds available, so we used this to, uh, to offset that. All right. Page 46. 9300 tuitions. I make a motion to approve the bottom line budget figure on page 46. 9300 series tuitions in the amount of $4,179,586. Second. Are there any questions? Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Five zero. Okay, that brings us to the end of the page by page um, overview of the budget. Um, is there anything you wanted to say? Uh, no, Jeff just has like a final uh, motion. Motion, yes. Okay, yeah. I didn't know if there was anything else you wanted to no. add. Okay, so then with that, Jeff, I will take a uh, motion for the total amount for the fiscal year 2024. I make a motion to approve the bottom line budget figure of 70700000 as referenced on pages 10 and 47 of the superintendent's recommended FY 2024 budget. Second. Is there any questions? Do we have to roll call this one? You do. Further discussion? All right. Dennis? Aye. Jeff? Aye. John? Aye. Maria? Aye. Aye. Five zero. Thank you. And procedurally, you know, that's the amount that um, is included by, um, not by chance, it was, you know, coordinated, but that's the amount that um, town manager has recommended the town meeting in the spring. Um, so that's the number that's now included in the town meeting, um, the warrant uh, article for the spring, and that's the number that we'll be going forward with at this point uh, for the spring. Is it, I had read that there's more money coming back to the town. Oh, we're going to talk about that. <laughs> Can't talk about that? We're, no, we are going to talk about oh, that. Oh, we are going to yes. talk about that. Okay. All right. Um, Rita, you want to... Well, no, I, I'm just on that note, um, one of the things that happened last week is the preliminary Chapter 70 figures came out from the town and the town manager had sent us an email. Um, you know, for, for some reason, uh, Chelmsford's number uh, increased pretty significantly than over what it has previously. We have to date been what's considered a minimum aid district, so we've been receiving basically about $30 uh, a head uh, per student for our increase. So if you've got 5,000 students, it's about $150,000 we get a year. Sometimes it will go up based on little factors up to, I think last year was a little over $200,000, but it hasn't been significant. And when I looked at the number that came in this, and I texted Paul right away too, because he was looking at it, it was like over $2 million for Chelmsford. So one of the things that, um, uh, this obviously, I didn't foresee this coming. Um, a lot of the um, governor's budget is obviously tied to the full funding of the Student Opportunity Act. I did a quick um, kind of scan and analysis of some of our other local districts. They weren't seeing that kind of an increase. Um, I even just looked at like some of our comparable districts that we talk about to see if they have similar things happening in their districts. And they weren't, they were seeing increases, but not to the level that we've seen. The over two million is kind of unheard of. Um, so both Paul and I agreed we really need to kind of see if this is a solid number or, you know, is, is this a, uh, what's causing this? Because this is all formula driven. So I reached out to um, Roger Hatch, who has worked with us before to do some of the Chapter 70 analysis. 
He's one of the finance folks from uh, Desi who retired a couple of years ago who's still very active in this. And um, he agreed um, he's going to do a little project for us where he's going to do an analysis of obviously the Chapter 70 trend, but specifically kind of get into the formula that arrived at this new uh, figure. Um, and he said within about two weeks' time he'll have a report for us. And I actually asked him to kind of put a placeholder on the 21st meeting. Um, he might just be able to join remotely. He's done that before and kind of walk through exactly how based on the governor's budget our number went up so much so that we can see if it's really grounded in formula and we think it's then going to be uh, predictable when the House budget comes out and the Senate budget comes out or if it's some other um, kind of quirk so that we'll kind of know that. So I'll, we'll have a much better idea by the 21st. I think Paul's email to us was just, you know, not to get too excited ahead of time, and I agree because this is this just I didn't foresee this coming. Um, but I'd also want to know if this is happening in 23. Is this predictable again for 24, 25? Is there something in that formula that maybe has caught up and jumps is going to get a little bit of a um, relief from that? So, our current budget that you approved tonight and that we've been working on with the town manager is not predicated on that two million dollar increase. It was based on, you know, about a $150,000, $200,000 increase that we normally see. So if that ever did come through, obviously that's more money earmarked towards education, but the town's requirement to spend money on education also goes up. So that would have to be a separate conversation with the town manager because, again, he hadn't baked this into his budget forecast, and uh, we'd have to see where to go from that. But I'll, I'll honestly feel much better once Roger kind of digs into the numbers and we have a sense of exactly where that, why that happened and, um, and where. I'm doing kind of like the big accounts and the, the overview stuff, and um, nothing's jumping out to me yet. So I just want to kind of get his, his take on it. Would it so, oh, go ahead, Don. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, before we go too um, deep into this, um, I was going to bring it up, this up under actually um, um, action new items. Um, to talk about, you know, how it is as a committee that we want to proceed. Um, but if there's any questions related to that amount of money and the budget, then we can talk about that now. Is that all right if we wait till we get there? Yeah, okay. All right. Back to you. Okay. Um, so thank you for the budget. I think we're in good uh, good shape for that. We'll get this uh, printed up and in, in out to, uh, to town meeting, so that looks good. Um, just continuing on the regular new business items, we're going to shift into item number four, which I'll ask Joanna to preview, uh, preview with you. This is just a recommended budget transfer for the current fiscal year 23. Thank you. So there's just a little memo. Um, this is a budget transfer for the music uh, department. Um, we'd like to transfer $2,660 from one um, DESI category textbooks and instructional materials <coughs> to an other music account to fund um, music clinicians and accompanists. I move that the school committee vote to approve the FY 2023 local operating budget transfer for the Chelmsford Public Schools as presented. Second. Is there any questions or discussion? All right. Dennis? Aye. Jeff? Aye. John? Aye. Maria? Aye. Aye. Five zero. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, next item is a personnel report. So this is your uh, monthly look at the prior month's um, personnel transactions. So this details for the month of January, a few new hires, a few resignations, and a couple of assignment changes, people changing jobs within the district. I'm uh, just sharing that with you for informational purposes. Uh, no action required. Thank you. And lastly, this evening, I just have um, four field trip requests before you. Uh, the first field trip request is Chelmsford High School. The uh, wrestlers who ended up qualifying this past weekend for the New England uh, Wrestling Championships, which is this coming weekend, Friday and Saturday in Providence, Rhode Island. The second field trip is also Chelmsford High School related. This would be students qualifying for the DECA um, conference, which is in Boston, Mass., from March 9th through 11th. It's a state competition. Uh, third, we have uh, Parker Middle School sixth grade students to do a PBIS team building experience um, at the YMCA Camp in uh, Lincoln, um, YMCA Camp Lincoln. It's in Kensington, New Hampshire. Um, it's on two different days, the 24th and 25th. I just want to be clear that the kids are not sleeping overnight. Um, it's just the school split into two groups because of the numbers. So one group is going on the 25th, one group is going on the 25th. I'm sorry. 
One group's going on the 24th, one group's going on the 25th, uh, but it happens to be out of state, so that's why I was seeking your permission. And then lastly, McCarthy Middle School, eighth grade students who are enrolled in French and desire to go on the French uh, cultural language exchange experience. And this is June 2nd to 4th. This is an overnight in uh, Quebec, Canada. So I recommend those four uh, field trips for approval. Let's take them all separately because we have <laughs> some in state, some out of state, some out of country. I make a motion that the school committee approve the Chelsea High School qualifying rest wrestlers field trip to the New England Wrestling Championships March 3rd through the 4th in Providence, Rhode Island. Second. Any questions or concerns? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Four zero. I move that the school committee approve the Chelsea High School qualifying DECA students to the field trip to the DECA State Korea Development Conference March 9th through the 11th in Boston. Second. All right, any questions or concerns? I'm sorry. I'm so, no, I have no concerns. I was voting on it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. All those in favor? Uh, aye. 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 She's a lot of favor. voting. <laughs> I move the school committee approve the Parker Middle School sixth grade students PBIS team building experience, the YMC Camp Lincoln, one group going on May 24th, the second group going on May 25th, and the camp is in Kingston, New Hampshire. Second. Any questions or concerns? All those in favor? Aye. Four zero. I move that the school committee approve the McCarthy Middle School eighth grade students French cultural and language experience field trip June second through the fourth to Quebec, Canada. Second. Any questions or concerns? All those in, yes? Aye. Oh, Aye. you're still, okay. Sorry, I think that was the question. So we have seconded first. <laughs> no. Hi, I what? seconded it. You seconded it, okay. Yeah. Did you have a question? No. Okay, all those in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. I did have a question about the previous vote. You said 4-0. Just for the Did I? I, yeah, but sorry, it's, this the numbers are getting to me. It's okay. Five zero. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. I'm just letting Sharon, you know. Sharon, I'm sorry. I'm no Sharon. I'll fix you. It's five zero on. Uh, we'll zoom in. It, we know if you had not voted. It is. For it. <laughs> well, I'm telling. Budget just does me in. Budget. And then um, McCarthy was. Um, we voted on that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Five zero. Yeah. Okay. Oh. All right. I'm sorry. No. All right. And that concludes the agenda or well, my portion of the agenda for tonight. Right. Does anybody have any liaison reports? Maria? Okay. I attended Parker PTO. Mm. They were very, very nice. It really it was are. really nice to meet everybody. Um, John was away, so I did that. The, uh, their month-long dine to donate with WECO earned them $1,112. Parker's first ever calendar raffle is underway with daily drawings. Uh, starting Wednesday tomorrow, um, tomorrow, March 1. Parker's production of Junior High School Musical is this weekend. And Parker and McCarthy PTO is collaborating on the Middle School Night at Fenway Park, June 1st. Tickets go on sale 310, so March 10th. And Parker and McCarthy PTOs are collaborating to create a host and host... Um, community building activities um, for this coming school year, which is great to hear. Um, I attended the McCarthy PTO Zoom meet, um, and that was yesterday. They had their musical, Matilda. Uh, they sold candy grams and did quite well. It was a lot of work, so they're, they're revamping how they're going to do it next year. Seventh grade dance also was a lot of work, but extremely successful is what they're saying. They just need more volunteers in the future. The Red Sox game uh, with Parker on June 1st was also, it's $40 a ticket, and they have 250 tickets. And then the Rock and Roll Bingo for March 24th sold out on all the tables in two hours. Wow. That's amazing. They're still accepting donations for that night uh, for any kind of prizes that are going to happen. Uh, they are, again, the same thing as Parker. They're working with each other on um, student events and things that they will do. They're discussing ice cream socials, things like that, to bring everybody together um, as we do the middle school realignment. Okay, and that was it. And they also met together as boards to talk about what will happen with the PTO boards given the realignment. All right. Does anybody else have any other liaison reports? Just a reminder that the uh, 
Chumps at All Boosters Club is having their uh, St. Patrick's Day party on March 11th, and you can go online to get a ticket. It's going to be at the uh, establishment, and they're also selling a fundraiser of tulips for uh, Easter time. So if you want it, you can also go online and order those. Just uh, Chips PTO meets Thursday night, 6.30. Um, I also just want to remind you, Center School Science Fair is sure. on the 16th of March, and they're still looking for any people to help out there. Um, so if anybody's interested, they can contact the Science Fair coordinator, Jen Keenan. I'm still looking for not judges, but people to go around and look at the kids' projects. Uh, and I think tonight is the, today's the last day to buy tickets for the Taste of Chelmsford, which is their big fundraiser. So if you want to get those there, they're still available online. Hi, anybody else? Okay, great, thank you. All right, moving on to action items and new items. Uh, Dennis, did you want to bring? No, you want to? You, you want to sure. So um, when we saw the number, we didn't question it. We just got all excited. <laughs> <laughs> and I would like to I operate. <laughs> you know, I do think it. Um, while we're doing the, the process with Roger Hatch, I do think it's important that we reach out to our um, legislators and find out you know, kind of their take on it, and also, but certainly encourage them um, to have this move forward. Uh, this would be um, so great for Chelmsford and, and, and about time, to be perfectly honest. So um, one of the things that Dennis had mentioned um, to me was maybe writing a letter, and my concern was is that the letter would get lost in the shuffle of papers on an aide's desk, so that maybe we might be better off um, reaching out to our uh, representatives individually you know, representing the committee, obviously, but I know some of us have good relationships um, with um, some of the legislators, and I didn't know if we could each choose one uh, person uh, to reach out to, um, to talk to them about this, and why it's so important to challenge her that this, this come to fruition. So yeah. the other thing, too, to remember is, and we can certainly follow up, if you would like, on the 14th, we have that workshop. Mm -hmm. Okay, so remember, next week, we also have a school committee meeting. Okay, mm -hmm. then the following we have the um, workshop, our working session, okay, around um, talking about the priorities uh, for, um, uh, you know, what it is that we want to be able to discuss with our um, legislators when we invite them in um, to meet with us. We can finalize who's going to talk to who on the 14th, okay. if that's okay, and then maybe we'll have a little preliminary information from yeah. Roger at that point. And I think okay the 13th, we have to go to the select board meeting. And this, right, board. and that was the next thing I was going to mention. And remember, we also have to be at the select board meeting on the 13th. So we have, we're busy again in the month of March. But is that okay with people if we, <laughs> we yeah. finalize yeah. that on the 14th? And Don, I, yeah. I've already reached out to Representative Cataldo. Good. Uh, already heard back from him. Right, so. and, then, and you said you know him pretty well. Maybe you could. And you know um, Representative Arciero pretty well? Pretty well, okay. yep. Yeah. We got him. All right, and, and I'll um, tap in Erin Drew over there. She knows them all too. All right. So you're gonna hide in the back. So all right, nice. <laughs> and then um, yeah, and we can finalize that. Maria had maybe mentioned out uh, mentioned reaching out to Representative Howard, okay. and mm -hmm. um, you know Representative um, Elliot as well. Okay. All, right. all right. Is there any other uh, um, action items or new items that people would like to see on our agendas? I'm sorry, do you want us to reach out to them now or wait till the 14th? You know what, why don't you wait till the 14th and we'll okay. come up with a, um, a uh, talking points. Okay. How's that? So that we're consistent in what our message will be to them. All right. Will we have any update on the Chapter 70 formula thing by then? Maybe. Um, yes. It's actually maybe the week after. I think you said that he might come to the meeting. Well, he's going to come the week after. Right. I might have like a draft report or something mm -hmm. or at least an idea from him to talk about on the 14th. Right. Because I remember in the past that he said that um, Chelmsford was going to be coming up very close on benefiting from that new Chapter 70 formula. And it could be that what's happening in the town in terms yeah, of population. Yeah, the only thing, again, so I'm, I'm very excited if it were to happen. I'm just a little skeptical because the Student Opportunity Act was really benefiting more, ur what I know, but more like urban uh, school systems. We're practically a small city. Okay. All right, so... So we're going to find out. <laughs> we're going to say that for meeting. about two weeks here. The thing is, is those are the governor's budget. This has to go through legislature. Right. Mm -hmm. right? right. And this is where the problem is. That's why we have to go to our right. reps and say, well, yeah. when you start doing your, keep this in mind, you know, because you know, well, they, they definitely love voting against their I always thought but he it, was a little bit more conservative than everybody else, though. The governor? Governor. 
the governor's budget. Again, this is this is the first budget from this governor, so it's just it's hard to predict. Mm. But even to that, it is a it's a formula. You know, it's a formula right. that controls Chapter seventy. So um, we really have to just kind of wait and see how this plays out. The advocacy thing, I think, is is big. I mean, so I definitely would do that. But hopefully, we'll be grounded a little bit in what Roger might get back to us with. I really do trust and respect his. Um, insight into this. Mm -hmm. And if I have anything by the 14th, we'll certainly um, let you know. So I don't think the House one usually comes out till about April, right? House budget? <sighs> um, yeah, and everything is going to be delayed this year. So right. I think if we see a House budget, yeah, April's probably realistic because I, I believe the governor's budget used to be um, end of January, February. Hey, don't forget, Tom said, you know. Right, sure. What was the select board meeting on the 13th? Um, for the Neshoba. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Neshoba Valley, yeah, um, school committee. Okay. All right. Um, is there any other, anybody for public comment? Any public comment? No. no. Okay. Then with that, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Oh. I move um, that we adjourn. I, uh, excuse me. I'm sorry. Did you, uh, new items for items on the agenda? Yes, I, I did that. So I the did. middle school realignment update is coming? Uh, March 21st. Okay. That, for me, is big because I'm getting a lot of questions on that. So. Okay. Great. Yep. Uh, 321, I'll have a report for you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Is there anything else? Okay. Then with that, I'll uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. I move that we adjourn. Aye. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Five zero. Thank you, everybody.